Today, I aim to explore certain aspects where Catholics seem to be misled and they don't want to see what's right in front of them. Now, this will not be an attack. If you're a Catholic, I ask that you watch this, all of this, before making a decision on its value or accuracy. I've been called everything you can imagine due to my previous videos about the Catholic Church. I'm told I'm wrong, I'm a liar, but never does anyone use scripture to show me that I'm wrong. That's because the scripture's not there. Now, if you feel I'm wrong, that's completely within your rights. But like I said, all I ask is that you listen to the points I make, and if at the end you disagree, post in the comments with the scripture that you believe proves your point. Let's begin with the profound significance of prayer. Now, John 14, 6 is a significant verse in the New Testament where Jesus speaks to his disciples, emphasizing his role as the exclusive means by which believers can approach God the Father. In this verse, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this statement by Jesus underscores his centrality in a relationship between humanity and God. It highlights that he is not just a way among many to reach God, but the singular and exclusive path to the Father. Now, Jesus identifies himself as the embodiment of truth and life, signifying that he is the source of eternal life and the ultimate revelation of God's truth to humanity. For many Christian believers, this verse encapsulates the foundational belief that salvation and access to God are made possible only through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It emphasizes the unique and indispensable role of Jesus as the mediator between humanity and God, inviting believers to embrace him as the way to a restored relationship with the Father. These verses, among others, are often cited to support the belief in praying through Jesus, acknowledging him as the means by which believers can approach and communicate with God. The Bible does not say or instruct believers to pray to or through Mary. The New Testament primarily emphasizes praying to God the Father through Jesus Christ, as Jesus himself taught his apostles to pray to the Father. While Mary, the mother of Jesus, holds a significant place in Christianity for her role in giving birth to Jesus, nurturing him and being a faithful follower of God, there is no biblical teachings or guidance to pray to her or through her as an intercessor. Now this is a prime example of doing a deed that is not only not told to us in the Bible, but goes against the fact that we are told to pray only through Jesus. The Bible leaves no need for intercession, not through Mary and especially the saints. Many Catholics have argued, don't you do that every time you ask a friend to pray for you? Aren't they interceding? Well, the answer is no. God tells us to pray for one another. When I do this, I'm not praying to this person to talk to God for me. Now, this is a completely different act and is grounded in biblical scripture. So, let's talk about the concept of purgatory. That's prevalent in Catholic theology. It represents a divergence in our beliefs. As a Protestant, my conviction aligns with the absence of biblical support for purgatory. Our faith is centered on the redemptive sacrifice of Christ, which we deem sufficient for our salvation and cleansing from sin. Purgatory is never mentioned in the Bible. There is no middle ground between earth and salvation. A study of history will show you that it was created by the church to fight off the loss of parishioners. There is no biblical grounds for purgatory, and it remains a myth that has been made fact in the Catholic Church. Now, let's talk about what the Bible teaches about wealth. In Matthew 6, 19-21, it urges believers to prioritize heavenly treasures over earthly possessions. This scriptural guidance underscores the impermanence of material wealth and encourages 
a focus on spiritual riches with eternal value. The Catholic Church is so wealthy that they are worth billions upon billions, gold and treasure everywhere. Per capita, the Vatican is one of the wealthiest countries on the globe. Why the wealth? Well, much of it was accumulated over centuries of pillage. Now, try to name one of the apostles that was both insanely wealthy and at the same time celibate with no spouse. See, this is not what God asked us to do in the Bible. There is never a mention about this. To the contrary, we're told it makes him happy when we sacrifice or have long suffering and when we're fruitful and multiply. So the absolute wealth of the Catholic Church should be a red flag in itself, or at least enough to make someone look into it. Now, what about the worship of idols? The Bible, in no uncertain terms, opposes the worship of idols, as depicted in Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6, emphasizing the uniqueness of God beyond any physical representation. This prohibition against idolatry serves as a reminder to direct our devotion solely to words of the divine and not towards created objects. Objects such as rosary beads, statues of Mary, and Christ on the cross are all idols of graven image which are forbidden from the commandments, where we are told, thou shalt not make graven images. And what God is talking about here is making images of things in heaven or even things in hell, things from the spiritual world or things that are holy. We're not supposed to make representations of those. So this once again goes completely against what the Bible teaches. So we have a statue of Mary and we kneel before it and we pray to Mary to intercede to the Father for us. Right there, folks, we have an entire basket of misdoings all in one place. So let's keep going. Let's talk about the titles that are used within the Catholic Church. Regarding the title of Father, Matthew 23, 9 provides caution against attributing spiritual authority or reverence to human leaders beyond what is due to God. While acknowledging the respect of earthly fathers, this verse emphasizes the supremacy of God as our ultimate father. The Pope and priests are not a biological father, therefore, this is a spiritual title. And it's blasphemous to use this as it's been reserved for God and God alone. So, this is just a few examples of the things that I ask you to challenge me on find any scripture to disprove this. Now, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. I understand the reluctance to hear what others are saying. I was taught that if I listened, I would go straight to hell. I finally heard the truth one day and it was the greatest day of my life. We are told that the masses will be misled, thinking they are following God when they are not. Please just hear this and study the information I've put before you. If you feel the same after that, then that's your choice. So anyway, as I end today, I invite you all to join me in a prayer. Father, we come before you humble, weak, and broken. Only through Jesus can we gain salvation, and for that, we are thankful beyond words. Father, please help us open the hearts of those who have been blinded by tradition and have closed themselves off. Let us not listen to men, but only to you. Father, be with our brothers and sisters around the world and with our Jewish brethren in these times of trouble. Protect us from the evil one. In Jesus' name, amen.